Hey guys, Alex West here, and I'm back for another Fantasy Star New Genesis video. So the GeoLab update is now available, and uh, to be honest, it's fun and, and it's challenging as well. However, the rewards for this quest is really quite lacking in my opinion, and it needs some update so players will keep coming back and doing it. The GeoLab is divided into 6 floors with different side missions to complete which is similar to the coons and towers that we already have in NGS. The only difference is that they added attack HP modifiers and added random challenges as well. So for the modifiers, we have plus 400 HP and plus 300% attack as enemy modifier. For item modifiers, on the other hand, we have increased rest assign consumption level 5, which consumes 6 rest assigns per heal. And the other one is decrease max carry limit of resign items level 4, which reduces the carry limit of number of rest assigns and reverse assigns by 4. Random challenges A, B, and C depends on a given condition, which will take effect on certain floors, making the run more challenging. Before you get all the max level modifiers, you need to unlock them first, which is kind of similar to the divide quest we have back in base PSO2. The only downside to this is that you can't taxi people for easy leveling and party members with the lowest modifier will be the given conditions. Here are my team recommendations for getting an S rank in Geolab. So for the standard team, you need one tank that will be a hunter, a fighter, or a braver katana as long as they can hold much of the aggro especially for some of the boss monsters or giga spawns. The next one is gonna be the ranger. The ranger's weak bullet or blight rounds is a great addition for bonus damage. It's good to take down tough monsters much faster. And another one is, is a launcher or a ranger with launcher weapon is also another great consideration because of divide launcher PA. It has a huge AOE helping out to clear mobs much faster. The other one is gonna be a support class. It's gonna be your tecker class. As having a shifta and d-band buff, it's a nice boost for the whole party. And overemphasis is an excellent utility skill because it can compensate for the lack of heals. It doesn't count as a rest assign. And the next one is gonna be your force class. I highly suggest this one because this, this can be your main DPS or this can be your crowd control support due to the elemental down, which is also a big help for the team. Force class can also act as a secondary healer of the team since most of the force class can heal with AoE effects. Other variations that I can recommend is having one tank, two force, and one tacker. Or you can go for one tank, one support, and two DPS builds. So for potency, I recommend having around 50% potency. And you can easily reach this now with stat tree, boss soul 2, a gigas 2, a jewable tree, and going for a Magnus Lab or Resola Note. Or if you want to be a go if you wanna go for a bit tankier build, you can also go with a Dreadkeeper 2 instead of going for the note augments. However, if you go for the Dreadkeeper 2, your potency will drop around to 44%. But that's not bad at all. Overall, I highly recommend going with a plus 50 weapon and a plus 50 unit. You can use any weapon. You can use any 5-star weapon, alright? I'm not, not any weapon. Any 5-star weapon or 4-star units that you want. Depends on what you need. But if you're a new player, I highly suggest going for the cuckoo, cuckoo weapons. The bonus potency and damage reduction it gives when you're inside the Geolab is a great boost to have. So here are some tips for doing uh, the Geolabs. So number one will be before you start Make sure that everyone understands the role that they has to do, so everyone will be on the same page. For tip number two, detectors overemphasis is a great utility skill since it doesn't count as a rest assign. And some rooms you can only heal for a limited number. Keep in mind though that the overemphasis has a five minutes cooldown. Therefore, detector class has to be mindful when to use it. For number three, always make sure to check the number of rest assigns and reverse assigns before going on the next floor. For number 4, the final boss Ikosabujin in the 6th floor has an unblockable stun move that can one-shot tanks and dodging is the only way to avoid this. It's kind of similar to the uh, counter move that Shiva has back in base PSO2. 
Number five, you can lure the rock bear out of the platform by making him do a jump attack or a jumping grab attack, which will kill him instantly. But if you have been grabbed in mid-air, make sure that you know how to grab cancel or you will die as well. Tip number 6, in the maze room, always make sure that the cubes are part of the side quest. If obtaining cubes are not part of the side mission, you can just complete the maze without getting the cubes. For tip number 7, also in the maze room, I recommend having two players will do the maze. One for the blue side and one for the red side. The reason for this because we can filter the number of monsters spawning before activating the locks because sometimes there will be equalizers or giga spawns making it more difficult to clear. Tip number 8 will be prioritize killing the equalizers first since they have a buff making all enemies in the area to have much higher damage resistance. In the end, the Geo Labs is a great addition in NGS. It's fun and challenging, and doing it with a group makes it better. Unfortunately, the rewards are a bit lacking in my opinion, since most of the drop doesn't sell much in the market, making it not worth doing it in the, for the long run. Unless if you want the next Alien Accessories or the Motion Dash Ninja 2. Comparing this with purple triggers, doing the purple triggers is much better for farming or making meseta in-game. My suggestion to this, maybe Sega should update the drops by giving us Dreadkeeper augments by adding random vet spawn monsters and also adding a chance to drop purple triggers and some strugments as well by achieving S rank. Overall, I love the Geolabs, but undeniably, it's still lacking in some things that will make me doing it multiple times. But this is a good direction for an update. In my opinion, with that, I give the Geolabs a 7 out of 10. And uh, before we end this video, I, was, I just want to shout out to my amazing party with uh, RX93 and uh, with Kaylin, also with Levi the Moon Eater. They are an amazing party members. Without them, I won't be able to reach S rank in the, in the Geo Labs. And as always, if you like this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribe before my channel for future updates. My name is Alex West, and I'll see you on my next video.